Uh, Director Ray, hello. I know it's been a long day, and I appreciate you. You're on the very tail end of uh, the, uh, the questioners, so I appreciate your en endurance. Uh, I first just want to associate myself with uh, maybe not the heat uh, that you received from uh, Senator Whitehouse, but definitely the spirit of what he was talking about. And I appreciate your commitment uh, to meet his concerns, which are concerns I've heard on both sides of the aisle. It's very hard to play our role, our constitutionally mandated role, if we don't have the information to do the oversight of your agency. So I, I do appreciate your commitments. Um, I also want to join what is, uh, I think, as you've seen, a really bipartisan um, uh, condolences for the loss of Daniel Alfin, Alfin and uh, Lauren Schwarzenberger. Um, th th that is the greatest sacrifice anyone can make for this nation, which is to die in the line of duty and protecting others. I'm aware that there are other officers that were injured, um, uh, other agents that were injured. I, I hope they're recovering well. They are. They are. I've, I uh, had the opportunity the, the morning after the shooting to, uh, to go down not just to meet with Laura and Dan's families, um, but also to visit the hospital. Uh, and happily, I think the, the four injured agents um, should make a full recovery. Well, would you please express from the entire committee um, not only our condolences to the families, but our robust concern uh, for their recovery and their well-being, and should they need anything, you obviously have uh, allies here uh, in their well-being. Thank you, Senator. Um, I, I, you and I have had a, a, one of my a, a treasured conversation, frankly, to have the — you showed me the honor of coming to visit me before you were uh, — sat with me in my office before you, you, you stepped into that job. And I really appreciated our conversation about the challenges we still have in this country around racial issues and um, the urgency for the FBI, which has abused its power before, whether it's investigations of Martin Luther King or other ways, to really — uh, set an example for the largest uh, uh, driver in many ways as we pledge allegiance to this flag of this driver towards being a just nation. Um, I, I just want to ask you, though, about your team. Um, uh, we know uh, that diverse teams are better. Uh, everybody from Harvard Business School to every top con uh, con business consulting agency has shown study after study that diverse teams are stronger teams, but especially ones in law enforcement that have such a mandate that you have. Uh, having diversity is really important. And so I guess my first question is, is how diverse is the FBI's workforce now uh, in terms of uh, gender, religious, and racial diversity? Uh, so, Senator, this is a topic uh, that, as you may recall from our, our prior visit, uh, is very important to me personally uh, and something I've tried to make as a priority. Uh, we're addressing it in a variety of ways, uh, but in terms of results, uh, there is, I guess I would characterize it as cautiously optimistic. So uh, on the racial diversity front, uh, our special agent class uh, has been more diverse with each year over the past few years, uh, in each case more certainly than the uh, diversity percentage of the workforce that exists. Uh, and this year, uh, which I think is a bright spot, uh, the percentage, the racial diversity of our applicant pool is much higher than it was in years past. Uh, on gender, uh, much the same. Applications, the diversity of applications is up significantly. The diversity, uh, gender diversity of our quantical classes is up. Uh, we've set, I've set aggressive uh, targets for our field offices, and those targets are, for the most part, being exceeded. Uh, so we're doing a number of things to try to address the issue. We have what we call diversity agent recruitment events, uh, which were easier to do pre-COVID, uh, but that, you know, that a lot of times I would go to in different parts of the country myself and speak at. Uh, we have a, uh, a very encouraging uh, project we've started with 300 Entertainment that's focused on um, uh, historically black colleges and universities and trying to improve our recruiting pipeline there. Um, and can, and, I, can I yeah. maybe just ask you, could you share that data with the committee uh, of the progress that you're making? So sure. I think, I think there's definitely information we could provide uh, separately. And then your leadership team, can you provide the diversity of the, of the leadership team that you have around you? Sure. I will, I will say uh, yes uh, is the answer. But uh, I will say that on that front, um, uh, I've recently uh, appointed to, you know, we have, I'm not sure how much you may remember about our structure, uh, but we have at the very top of the FBI six EADs, executive assistant directors, each one of us over a branch that has multiple divisions. Uh, so just over the last couple of months, uh, as people retire, 
Uh, I've replaced one of the uh, EADs with an Asian American woman who oversees our human resources branch, uh, and one of the other of these six EADs with an African American male uh, who oversees our intelligence branch, which includes not just our entire intelligence function, but our uh, our private sector engagement and our law enforcement partner engagement as well. Um, I also uh, appointed the first. I want to honor, yeah. honor, honor the time here. I look okay. forward. To, I know you'll be available to discuss yep. that more and Absolutely. get the information. Um, uh, in the in the minute or so I have left, um, I've really I think a lot of the questioning has been uh, very uh, uh, illustrative of a lot of the challenges we face, and I appreciate that from members of both sides of the uh, of, of the of the dais here. I, I just wanted to drill into something we've talked about the. Uh, extremist groups that were at the Capitol. We talked about many others, but as I've seen interviews of folks, there were many people that were just saying, I'm here because President Trump, uh, now former President Trump, wanted us here. And it seemed that this lie that was told over and over again, that many people felt like their, that their government had betrayed them, that the courts, and after court case after court case, that uh, uh, Republican official after Republican official were all just dead wrong, really believed in the lie and felt like they were left with no choice but to try to stop the peaceful transfer of power. And so I, I guess I'd just ask to begin with is that Attorney General Barr uh, said that he had, quote, not seen fraud on a scale that could have affected a different outcome in the election. Do you agree with Attorney General Barr's statement that there is absolutely no evidence a voter fraud that could have changed the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. I agree with Attorney General Barr. And, and to be crystal clear on this, as FBI director, who is this, these would be federal crimes, you're aware of no evidence of widespread voter fraud in the 2020 presidential election, correct? Uh, we are not aware of, of any widespread evidence of voter fraud, much less that would have affected the outcome in the presidential election. 